carbide drill bits and I want to take the diamond saw here that's a six inch 35 thousandths thick steel cord resonoid bond diamond saw of about a hundred grit and Chloe's nesting out down there oh, she's gonna go on an adventure it's kind of kind of stormy out there, so in here doing things. Okay, if you want to grab on the drill bits um, with the cutter grinder, and you're using 5C collets, well, one of the problems is the length that a 5C collet actually grabs something like a drill bit. It's like one third or less the length than like an ER type or an Ericsson type that I use. And here, let's see if I can get one out of there. Here's an Ericsson double angle. And you can see it grips more at the front. This one grips more of the full length, I think. But so does this to an extent. But these work good for grabbing drill bits. And the one thing you can do is choke up on a drill bit and grab it by the flutes. See? And you can't really do that. You can, but it doesn't work very well with the 5C just because of the way it's made with the three splits and uh, the short length that it actually grabs. So I've got these quarter inch, uh, three of them, and they're all broken, broken off. So in order to do anything with these, I got to cut those broken tips off, okay? So I'm able to grab, and I'll be able to repoint these too, using uh, this collet chuck stuck, <laughs> stuck in the 5C collet. This is a 5C uh, collet fixture uh, called an all-tool rotodex, and I'm going to cut that off, and I'm going to rotate it. Because it, it cuts kind of better doing that than locking it and going across it. Like you'd have to do with some things. So, okay. Well, I'll do that. And I want to point out that the carbide dust is dangerous. I have a vacuum. I have a vintage Filter Queen vacuum that seems to do a good job of taking care of the dust in here. I got the door open over there and there's kind of, I got ventilation in here. Okay, so I will get set up and we'll cut that. 
and I'm getting the machine pre prepared and I'm going to be feeding it in with this uh, cross feed here so I want to be sure that this is lubricated you know I'm forcing this piece of carbide into that expensive diamond wheel so I'm running this back and forth a time or two to, and oil it to make sure it's smooth and it's not going to be sticky okay I will be back in a second here. Okay, a couple of things about setting up the uh, number two Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder and probably many that are patterned after it. The, uh, the table doesn't uh, really have a very good lock on one side. It's got a lock here. But all it does is lock the pinion, and there's still table slop. And if you push in the planetary gear thing here, there's still table slop. So what you can do is use this planetary gear and use your table stops here and set it and then use this. And most table stops will have a spring that's just got a rubber bumper and just load it you can load that spring or whatever you got there and it will lock the table okay with no play it won't damage uh, you won't have any problem you know particularly more hazardous uh, with uh, the vitrified wheels you know you got to be extra careful with those these here you'll just uh, damage the wheels more likely than yourself. Now, grinding carbide's not like grinding high-speed steel. It, it's kind of like grinding tile or rock, and um, the dust from it is extremely toxic. That's why I have the vacuum going. And um, you really want to control that. And I'll, I'll put the camera up close, and maybe you can see... Uh, see it you know okay I'm gonna get this thing fired up I simply center the wheel have an old uh, uh, universal gauge there and find center then there's a mark here for center so that's how that's done. just very simple here's the other drills gonna grind all set up I had to move um, the uh, rotodex over a bit off the slots but it's still on the table just to clamp it because of the clearances you're always going to run into clearances on these uh, on these grinders and it's just simple to do something like that okay I'm going to fire this thing up I'm going to you <laughs> I'll quit talking because you're not going to be able to hear me likely um, I'll get the vacuum going first and get that spinner going Okay. Now I have to turn this by hand. I normally uh, use a motorized uh, work head. This is a, I haven't done this before, so I'm going to try. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Let's go. Here we go. Yes, I think I'm in a good spot. There's some chips on that carbide, so I'm putting it back a bit. I keep thinking I'm close, but I'm not.
It seems to be working fairly good if if I don't uh, um, grind too fast. I need to come up with some different nozzles. Let's see, I better cut that off. It's chipped clear back to here. Oh, it's busted right here even. I'm gonna cut that one back quite a ways. Yeah, just about a quarter inch ahead of that collet. This is an Ericsson 300 collet. Some of the die grinders use this collet in the size up, which is a, a 200. Okay, this uh, Rotodex has got a button here, right there, and I can lock, uh, that's, that's taking a big chunk off, but that uh, got broken clear back, okay, I'll take it right about to there, let's see how that looks. Uh, let's see, let me take it. Right there would do it. Yeah, I'm going to point it, so... That's about leaving about as much as that as possible. Let's go ahead and cut that off. Vacuum on. Moving forward. <laughs> Right at 4,500 RPM.
That's a thin diamond wheel. You don't want to get your knuckles close to that. It'll touch you. I'm sure. That's the notch. Yeah, that's something to start with there. So I will set these up. I got one more to cut off. I'll cut that off. And then I'll set it up and start forming a point on, uh, on these so they're usable for uh, drilling out hardened pan. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching.